All right, folks, we got a nice fun one today because I wanted to do something a little bit different from the tutorials. <clears throat> we got Nigel Houston in the shop. If you don't know what this is, it is one of the countless podcasts coming out these days. But this this time they do it in the barbershop. I think LeBron has a couple of notable clips coming from this uh, podcast, even though where are the mics? They must be wearing them on their shirts or they might have boom mics. Do you think they actually cut people in this shop? Do they cut hair in this shop or is it just a set? It's all a facade to sell you the perfect shop. And in fact, the chairs are not even set up correctly. It's not even a legitimate shop. You can't even sell stuff. All right. Anyway, <laughs> why is it called the shop, the barber shop? to get a cut up a little bit. Uh, all right, here we go. I would say with NFTs and crypto and stuff, you he just say crypto. Hey, all right, man. NFTs and crypto is how we're starting it off. Let's continue, man, because I'm not, I'm not all about that stuff. Definitely have to have to go for it. You can't be like the conservative scared one, you know? Okay, just by that sentence, is he likening crypto to skateboarding? <laughs> Before I get into this, I know it's easy to hate on Nigel. Shout out to Nigel. I think he just tore his ACL. <clears throat> Pray for a speedy recovery. Hope he gets back. We're going to clown him a little bit, but I don't hate him. I think Nigel's past the point where you can say he's your favorite skater without having the Ryan Sheckler effect. Him being so polarizing, that is not cool to like him. Like, you can't say you're a Bengals fan now because they're a legitimate contender for the uh, Super Bowl. So. With the spill out of the way, let's clown on him a little bit. I think he's an amazing skater. Um, he's a little bit better than Steve Barra, but let's uh, let's continue. You just gotta go for it. Hey, 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 hey! I hope that's not caught. Hey, I hope this is not copyrighted. All right, all right, all right. I don't know who any of these guys are. All right, let's get, let's get. They're not condone any of this. Right, let's crank it. Just taper the back for me. Yeah, I got you. So they do give actual cuts <laughs> in the shop. They do actually get cuts. I wonder how much this guy gets paid. Ronnie, we in your shop getting fresh to death? Is yes, sir. Fresh to death. You know, being famous, I, I, I don't know if it's all that's cracked up to be because you have to act cool. These guys have to act cool. Like, do you think he would say fresh to death normally? Or you I like don't to know. do. I don't know. Glad y'all thank y'all for joining me. Who you got coming through today, man? I know you always got a trick up your sleeve. Oh, we got Niger coming okay, in. Okay, hold <laughs> We got Niger coming in. Is this a household name for these guys? Come on, dude. Brownie blends. <laughs> Keep the video moving, man. <laughs> D Niger? D Niger Houston? D Niger. Hey, it's right there. What up, there bro? <laughs> what up, brother? I'm good, brother. Good to see all right, you. All right, all right, all right. I'm sorry, I'm pausing it so much. There's a lot to unpack here. Did he? Ha did he? Was he standing on the shot? They say, "Roll." All right, take one, barber shop. And then he's like, oh, "Who you got coming in today, Brownie Blends?" <laughs> Nigel just standing in the corner, looking at his crypto portfolio. All right, and Brownie Blends is cut. He's fading up, my guy. He, he's getting a cut. He's got he's got the suit on. No hair on the floor, by the way. No hair on the floor. He's just getting cut with the man collar rug. All right, man. Let's. <laughs> What's going on, brother? Nigel, was good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for me. It's good to see you, man. Yeah. Nigel, what you been up to, man? I mean. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> good to see you, dude. All right, whatever. You know, I'm not a celebrity. I don't know. I mean, you know, everyone knows you for being. One of the, if not the greatest skater um, in the world. Is that Cap? Is that Cap? All right. How do you. How do you quantify the greatest skater of all time or in the world, I guess? So when you say in the world, are you talking about right now? Because if wouldn't greatest in the world be. Whoever won the Olympics, isn't that the world competition? So wouldn't it be Yuto? Nigel is the GOAT, if one of the GOATs, if not the GOAT, but I don't know if that statement was cap or not. Let me ask Steve Barra. But you're a lot more than a skater. What have you been up to when you're not skating? Yeah. 
Don't say NFTs, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, always, always on the board. I've been going hard lately, just with a lot of street skating and filming. And I don't know how familiar you guys are with like the the things we do outside of competition. Now, I want to say, man, that is kind of sad if he tore his ACL. In fact, it's incredibly sad, dude. Because I know he wants nothing more than to be on the board. So, uh, rip, rip ACL, dude. I hope he makes a speedy recovery. Is that what P Rod did? He tore his ACL, MCL, and meniscus. Jeez, and he's back in. Okay, okay. So I, I heard some talk about people like, oh, online they were commenting in the comments. He's going to be out for you know forever. He can't come back skating, dude. P Rod came back and he's like thirty something. So to, uh, not just twenty seven, I think. Hopefully he hits the recovery good. He'll be back soon. But a lot of it is just like spending time out in the streets and just skating cities. When we go film. We're not at. We're not chilling at skate parks. Like having fun with our friends. We're like getting going out there and just. Oh. Getting buck. We're not going to the skate park having fun with our friends. Okay. Man, I feel like that's a diss to people that go to the skate park. What's wrong with going to the skate park and having fun with your friends? You know, some people do stand around and sit on ledges or sit on ramps, but <sighs> I guess he's talking in relation to a professional skater, but still, I don't know. We're going to move on. Which one do you yes. prefer? Like going to a skate park or just street skating? Street skating is really where it's at. It's 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 what skateboarding is. It's what makes it so exciting. Wow. And even pros such as yourself, it's common for you guys to just pop up somewhere and skate with regular local skating? Like that wouldn't Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hey Nigel, um do you mind if I get this skate this spot with you? Man, do you think okay. What level of skating do you have to be to see Nigel Houston at a street spot? First of all, you have to make it behind the barrier of his if, of his crew, right? So you have to make it past, hey, bro, 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 back up, back up. He's trying to hit this spot. Back up, back up. Then you have to make it past the skill barrier where you're even good enough to attempt what he's doing. And then tertiary, you have to make it past him. Hey, bro, can I just get 10 tries on this spot, man? Like, just hold off for a second. You know, if you're just a regular Joe Schmo. <laughs> Happen in any other sport. I know, I know. And that's something I love about skateboarding so much is like it's such a it's such a good community, you know, like everyone is really cool with each other. I will say that's true. That's true. Everyone is cool with each other. For the most part, there's some people that pull up to the skate park that are just they just they just don't rock with you. But for the most part, I think the skateboarding community is one of the coolest communities out there. Shout out Rodney Mullen. Oh, that's dope. Man, get, get this off my screen. You're in the competition to stay in the moment you're listening to music. What what type of music are you listening to? Listening to either hip hop or house music. Dude, this dude really pushes his house music. Pick which one. Just depends. You know, on it kind of just depends on the mood, how I'm feeling that day. If uh, if I'm trying to like really be hyped in the moment, I'm probably gonna throw on like pop smoke. Got it. Like, just get as juice as possible. Rest in peace, Pop Smoke. Yes, peace. rest in peace, absolutely. He was a legend. And then if I'm trying to maybe get in, like, more of a flow of things and kind of calm down a little bit, maybe I'll throw on some black coffee. Dope. All right. <laughs> this guy says dope. Hey, Brownie Blends, what is black coffee? I don't even know what that. What is black coffee? I just had some nice espresso. It's flowing through my veins, and it's probably why I'm making this video right now. I don't know who Black Coffee is, though, but just these guys, just they kind of glaze over the mention of Black Coffee. Who is Black Coffee? They didn't dive into that. They didn't go deep into it. Oh, man. Man, I love Black Coffee. Brownie Blinn's got his fade, by the way. Check out this. This man is faded up. Does he give himself his own haircuts, Brownie Blinn's? Or does he have Ice Swirl give Brownie Blinn's his cut? All right, man, let's move on. Skating really was a subculture, but yeah. now you can walk up and down any street in LA. There's a skate shop or there's brands. Snoopsy's brands, gotten big. Yeah. As a, okay. Okay. Hold on. Let's go. a skater, as a purist who started since I think you were five or six or seven, and then amongst the community, how does that feel amongst each so other? Like, and this was our thing, and now it's like all over the world. Man, why do skateboarders like to gatekeep? Stuff. And uh, honestly, I think there's a part of skateboarding that is gatekeeping. I think it's ingrained in skateboarding culture to gatekeep because 
skateboarding is a gatekeeping. It has such a high skill level. Like anybody can go out and buy a football and go throw it 20, 10, 10 yards, right? A little kid can do that. Anybody can go out and throw a baseball. In fact, you might be really good for your neighborhood at throwing a baseball. If you just go out and buy it, you might already have that natural. But skateboarding is almost, gate. you can't hop on a skateboard and be good right off the bat. It's almost like it gatekeeps itself. And I think that's where gatekeeping comes from. So I don't know. Like it was a subculture. and But it's like they want to keep it a subculture. They don't want to spill over into corporate. And I, I'm kind of on the, I'm kind of teeter-tottering with like, do, do we want to go full corporate? Never go full corporate. I don't know. Do you want to go full corporate in skateboarding or do you want to just be a subculture forever? You know, because if you're a subculture, less people do it. You know, uh, less people can get into it. Less of your homies get into it. So I, I don't know. Was Flappy Bird a subculture? <laughs> Man, food for thought. When it comes to skateboarding becoming more commercial the thing that matters to me the most is like your average professional skateboarder being able to make a good living for themselves mm -hmm. because when you think about it like compare it to bas basketball or something like every professional basketball player is making a good future for themselves a good amount of money for themselves is the opposite with skateboarding like these guys are like people that i look up to and people that i see skate and i'm like you're one of the sickest skateboarders ever but they're like just getting by and I, that's something that I've always thought was kind of wrong. And I mean, I'm, I'm one of the, the few that has kind of gotten bigger outside of skateboarding to, to make a good living for myself. But I want to see that happen with a lot more skaters. I like that point. I like the point that he made where, you know, now I have no idea how much these guys make. I haven't even done the research and I'm not going to even begin to guess how much they make. But. Nigel knows this guy knows because he is the the I guess the man not even the gold standard he's the outlier of outline escape being a professional skateboarder is already a minuscule amount of the population but he's the outlier of the outlier so he knows what he's talking about so if his homies are not getting paid I guess dude there's no skateboarder getting paid on the level of it you could be a second string NFL player you're getting a lot of money for what you do you know and I would man. Would you wager that skateboarders put their bodies on the line more than NFL players? There might be an argument to be made there. I don't know. Maybe. Do you do they do a day in and out? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There might be an argument there, but I like that. I like how he's he's kind of thinking about that. Now, everybody ain't pushing NFTs. Okay, a lot of people are pushing NFTs, but everybody ain't pushing NFTs, you know. All right, next. Out there more than dude, hey, look at this dude this man hasn't touched it i thought brownie blends was giving this dude a fade does he is he still in the is he still in the jacket in the little thing that you with the cover and just a skater you have your own brand you're wearing the hat talk to us a little bit about disorder yeah disorder is my brand i started um... man all right disorder i i have like a i want to like it so bad i want to like disorder so bad because Disorder is from Nija. I I, I kind of grew up liking him, and I want to like the brand. But man, Disorder, dude, it seems like he just went into a randomizer like a... Out of all of these, couldn't all of these be his brand? Disorder? Mad. Insane. Deranged. Demented. Lunatic. Craze. Those could all be brands. Disturbed. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if he... If, if Disturbed was on his list of brand names. Back to the video. Um, almost a year ago now, okay. and uh, really just started it with me and my my homies I've been friends with for years. Is there a heat wave coming oh. off of his his face? Check this out. For years. What's going on there? Me and my my homies I've been. Look at that. Looking on the O. And uh, really just started it with. He's thinking hard about the NFT. Me and my my homies I've been friends with for years. I wanted to keep it as authentic as possible, and just start something with my homies and something that's going to be long lasting and something that. Brownie blends. <laughs> hey, I think I know him. I so at first I was going to let this part play, but didn't this man say every skater needs to get paid? No free promo. This guy starts to talk about um, how Nija is venturing into the business world and he needs to be, I guess, brave and brash at the same time to start a new business. But it kind of doesn't make sense because there's like 30 billion other skate brands. So 
he's not necessarily being brave and venturing into a new market. He's just getting a, his piece of the pie, essentially. But it wasn't that simple, though. How could I have thought it was that simple? It was a segue into crypto. The day the world starts counting your worth by how many bored apes you have in your crypto wallet, <laughs> count me out. But is that what pushed you in business? Specifically, I know you like big into NFTs. Is that the thing? Oh my God, I knew we were gonna get into it. It's on the title. NFTs, non-fungible token? Is your token fungible? If it is, I don't want it. That drives you there too, is just like, I'm gonna go for it. And it is crazy how successful some people have gotten off of it and uh, I'm Como se dice Red Bull? Jokers are swindling people. They're taking your money. If you buy an NFT and it's not a bored ape or a crypto punk, you are getting robbed. In fact, if you buy a bored ape or a crypto punk, you might still be getting robbed. Not financial advice. Still learning more about it myself, but I'm just happy that I'm uh, not too late on it. You know, you just gotta gotta keep up with the times nowadays. What is it about NFTs that's make it so hard for most the average person to grasp? Okay, hold on, hold on, Brownie Blends. Hold on, Brownie Blends. Did he just say what's so hard for the average person? Are we saying you're not the average person, Mr. Brownie Blends? Is that not a Hanes Go Tagless shirt on under your jacket, Brownie Blends? <laughs> No, I'm playing. He, he, I think he's above average. I think he's, a, you know, he's Brownie Blends himself, the celebrity barber. Brownie Blends, the, cel the celebrity barber. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really can be confusing, you know? I mean, it's hard to tell, like, what project. Hey, I keep on missing that shot. Is yeah, he getting I mean, cut? it really can be confusing, you know? I mean. Okay, he's not. He's not. He took the, the thing off. I wonder if they coordinated black outfits, white shoes. They had to. I guess that's the barbershop. Yeah, and okay. I'm, see, I'm, I'm tripping. That's the barbershop. That's the barbershop uniform. It's hard to tell, like, what projects are actually going to be long-lasting and which ones are actually going to be yeah. worth yeah. buying and investing into. I mean, no matter how much you like the art piece that you're buying, the digital art piece, you still want it to hold value. Yes, absolutely. And last thing before we wrap, is there one park rail something you haven't hit yet that you're dying to hit he laughed because he said park he's like dude look at his eyes dude he's 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 enraged right now did you just ask me if i want to hit a park did you just ask me if i want to hit a park don't you know that skateboarding is about street we're getting crazy in the streets man don't you know that you just asked me about a park Man, Brownie Blends, get him. <laughs> look at it. Look at him. Man, Brownie Blends, get on this guy, man. Get this guy off my... Man, wh why is he asking me these questions, man? Do I look like I skate park? <laughs> you <been> trying? <laughs> look, like, uh, oh, you asked me about a park, dude. Do you think I'm about to hit a park? Anything? There, there's a few. There's a few. Um, this year... What would these guys... Do you think these guys know the names of spots? Do you think they did the research that deep? Did Brownie Blinds open up his Instagram and look up famous spots that he go to Google? Did Brownie Blinds talk this whole time? He did, he did, he did. What are we what are we saying? It's honestly been a year where I'm just like as hyped as possible on getting as much footage as I possibly can. And uh, there's there's always so many spots that are on my mind that I want to hit. And uh, there's there's some big ones. There's some big ones. Absolutely. There's a Nigel. All right, we ain't doing this. No, 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 no. We're going to skip this one. I raising a water and some lemon. Little kids, this is a water with lemon in it. Drink water with lemon. Okay, water with lemon. Hey, brownie blends. Wait, go back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh my gosh. This is brownie blends unhinged in the flesh. Hold on, go back. <laughs> ah! <laughs> brownie blends. What is he doing? That's the video, man. <laughs> It, we just I just wanted to do a fun video for today because I know, um, yeah, I, you know, I, I'm laughing. Hopefully you guys laughed. If you laughed, smash that like. Nah, I'm not that type of person. This mic is hitting the top of its limit. I know it's a, it's a Blue Yeti. Remember, remember when Blue Yetis were the, the pinnacle of mic technology? Anyway, that's it. That's the video.